Although gradient correction works reasonably well with the default parameters, optimizing them will sometimes be necessary. Let's see the logical sequence we must follow when modifying the tool parameters. In this narrowband image, we have a red gradient at the top with a darker gap and a green gradient at the bottom. First, we try gradient correction with the default values using structure protection only when necessary. In this image, the nebula is large but very elongated and there are empty regions between its filaments. A priori, the risk of generating an overcorrection is low, so we turn off structure protection. The gradients begin to correct with the default parameters, but we still have remains. Our first tip is to use the PixInsight interface intelligently to test the parameters. We can check if we are moving in the right direction by comparing results among multiple previews. When gradient residuals remain, the first step is to test automatic conversions. If we compare it with the previous preview, we see that there has been an improvement. Now the gradients are better corrected, but there are still residues. Here we have the rest of the green gradient that has a quite aggressive edge, and there are small remains of gradients on the top. These are too small to be modeled with the default parameters. Now we are going to modify the scale parameter. If we need to increase the complexity of the model so that it can represent smaller gradients, we have to decrease its scale. Now we see that it is corrected better. This small gradient has almost disappeared, and this one is also practically corrected. If we reduce the scale again, we see that this edge is corrected much better. This is with a scale of 1.5, and this is with a scale of 2.5. Here, the correction is better. And this is the comparison with the original image. This image has a red gradient at the bottom right, a green gradient on the left, and a slight orange gradient at the top. Let's try with the default parameters. We turn off structure protection again because the risk of causing an overcorrection in this nebula is low. We can see that the gradients are corrected perfectly. This means that the default scale is small enough to model all the gradients in the image. As the gradients are quite simple, we are going to try increasing the scale to check if they continue to be well modeled. We do this because the scale and smoothness values must be as high as possible to create a model in which all the gradients of the image are well represented. With a value of 7.5, we completely corrected the gradients and preserved the nebulae better. Therefore, let's increase it some more. With a maximum value, we continue to model all the gradients perfectly, so we'll leave this parameter as it is. This helps to preserve the weakest areas of the nebulae further. 
Since the gradients are corrected with the scale to its maximum value, let's see what happens if we increase the smoothness. While the scale parameter allows us to model smaller or larger gradients, the smoothness parameter will enable us to smooth the initial model generated with the scale parameter. By increasing it to 0.65, we see that it performs a good correction and preserves the nebulae better. We increase it to 0.85. The smoothing leaves us with residual gradients that need to be corrected better. We have traces of red here, or this green residue that has not been completely corrected. We then leave it at the previous value of 0 Finally, we can always test the result with structure protection enabled. In the previous image, this option did not work well, but it gave us a better result in this image. The gradients continue to be corrected very well, and the nebulae are better preserved. This is the original image, here with the default parameters, increasing the scaling value, here increasing the softness value, and finally activating the structure protection. In this image, we have a horizontal gradient that goes from greenish tones to reddish tones. Let's first try to correct it with the default parameters. Again, we turn off structure protection because there are no bright and extensive objects. With the default parameters, all gradients are corrected perfectly. But we are also affecting the objects. We are losing the contrast of this dark nebula, or this. This is because we are modeling the objects too much. Since this gradient is smooth, we can safely increase the scale. Let's go to the second preview and try this scaling value. The gradients continue to correct and we have gained a little volume for the objects. Therefore, we increase this parameter again and leave it at its maximum value. Since this value continues to model the gradients well, we leave it as it is. If we compare, we see that the nebulae now have more volume. Since we have the gradients perfectly corrected, we will now increase the smoothness value. With this value, we continue to correct the gradients well, and the model affects the objects less. This is particularly visible in this nebula, which becomes darker. Let's increase it to 0 0.85. Now we see that we start to have residual gradients. For example, this one here, and this green one here. This smoothness value is too high. We leave it at 0 0.6. 
As we already mentioned in another video, it is advisable to increase the low tolerance value in an image full of dark nebulae. This way, we tell the tool that the sky background value is above them in the local environment of the dark nebulae. We will apply gradient correction with a value of 0.7 in low tolerance. If we compare it with the previous result, we can see that we created bright halos around the dark nebulae. This is now corrected, and the color across the image is much more uniform. Once the sliders are adjusted, we can try automatic convergence or structure protection to see if they improve the result. In this case, automatic convergence slightly improves the correction of gradients. This is particularly noticeable in the area on the right. This is the original image, this one with the default values, this one increasing the scale value, here increasing the smoothness, this one is changing the low tolerance values, and this one is with automatic convergence. And here is the comparison with the initial image.